There's a brand new AI photo editing software in town and it's called Polar Next and it may have changed photo editing forever. But is it a Lightroom killer? In this video, I'm gonna give you a full walkthrough of Polar Next and to show you how it works and how it can save you hours of time. This is super exciting for this channel because I can officially say that Polar Next have sponsored this video, the first official sponsor of this channel. This will be my 100% complete honest thoughts so that if there are parts of this software that I think needs improving or there's a few bugs, I will be saying it because hopefully they can fix it because at the moment of this recording, it's in its beta stage. So it's not a full release yet. So hopefully if there are some issues that I may find in this video and hopefully they can fix them upon the full release. Let's walk through of Polar Next. So as you can see at the minute, this is the full interface of Polar Next at the moment. As you can see, it is in beta stage. And if you haven't noticed already, I'm on Google Chrome. And that is because at the minute, Polar Next is a complete web-based software. So you can only access it online through Google Chrome. As you can see, the first thing when you boot this up, it will say you do not have any projects, create a new project. So let's create the first project. So as you can see, it will say, create a new project, please import a folder or select a folder. So I'm going to select my folder that I want to use now. And then as soon as you import your photos, you get to create an AI style. So you can either create a brand new AI style, use a style from a previous project or use Polar pre-trained AI style, or you can import a style file. So what we're gonna do straight away is we're gonna use a Polar pre-trained AI style so I can actually show you what it's like when using Polar's own presets. And you've got all of these pre-trained AI styles. So you've got Mellow, which is a velvety brown and creamy tones that capture authenticity. And you have a few options here of what it's gonna look like. There's a few photos. You can't actually zoom in on them or see them bigger. This is the biggest you get to see. And then you've got Ethereal, and then you've got Tender, Terrain, uh, botanic and yesteryear so obviously they're the only ones on there at the minute i'm sure with the full release they'll actually have more to offer to choose from but straight away let's go with terrain so we're going to hit continue and this is when it imports your files because i think they've already got my raw files on here i think the import process is basically already done but from my experience when i imported these before what i did try first was importing the whole project album and there was about 3,000 photos i've taken and that took really long time, I took like forever basically. So I don't recommend importing an entire project. What I do recommend you do is go into like a third party culling app such as Narrative Select. And this is when you can go through and just go through all your photos and pick the, obviously the best of the best, which ones you definitely want to edit. And then bring that folder into Polar and the importing time reduces significantly. Also, if you do this through a culling app, then all of your star ratings, so one to five, or your color picks will all get carried over into Polar Next, which is a really nice touch. Future Sam here, and I did notice that I was editing these photos on my hard drive, and today I tried importing some more photos on my SSD, and it was unbelievably quicker. So if you are using an SSD, the import times are really fast. But if you're using a hard drive, then it will be quite slow, like it did for me. So as you can see, it's already processed all of the images to that AI style, which didn't take long at all. I'll say it probably took about a minute or two. Yes, there's only 60 photos, but that is still quite quick. And if you do import a lot more photos, such as like three, 500, let's say 10 has already been processed. There are other 50 are still processing. You can still edit them 10 while the others are processing. You don't have to wait until all of the photos are done processing, which is a really good thing because you can get started on your edits straight away. So now you've got all your photos imported, all your photos processed, and this is the screen you get to look at. And you've got three different views to view all your photo. You've got the gallery, which is what we're looking at now, and it just shows you all of the photos. And at the bottom, it tells you what's processed, what's locked, and what are the reference photos. Now we'll get into the reference photos in a minute. If we go over to the top middle page, it's like you're back home at Lightroom. It's very similar to Lightroom. On the left, which is really nice, you've got the info of what was shot and what camera was shot, and it's got the exact settings you used at the time. You've got your user presets. So if you wanna import a preset, you can either create your own preset or you can actually import a Lightroom preset. So if you have all of your Lightroom presets already and you don't wanna go through and completely remake them all, you can import all of your Lightroom presets so you have them there instantly. And we've also got a history panel. We'll get a little bit more into the history panel later, but if you look down to the bottom left, you've got your settings panel and to the right of that, you've got your hotkey menu where it shows you all of the keyboard shortcuts that Polar Next has to offer from your AI styles, your navigation, your photo selection, 
your rating and labeling, your zoom in and your general. It's all there, but one thing that I have noticed that isn't there, and that is the shortcut for clipping. So if you press J on Lightroom, it will show you parts of the photo that is either clipped or crushed with red or blue markings. And unfortunately, there isn't a clipping tool on Polar Next, but I have spoken to them and they said they will be including a J shortcut for the clipping tool in the full release, which is absolutely amazing to see that they've already taken on the feedback from me and they're already trying to improve this software for when it actually releases. On the bottom, this is where you can filter the dates, you can filter what folder it is, and you can also filter what camera was actually shot. On the bottom right, this is where you can tag photos, so you can make two purple, blue, five star room, just like you other photo editors and apps like Lightroom. But on the right hand side, this is where you really will feel at home. Because as you can see, it is very similar to Lightroom. Before we get into that, the third panel is a before and after, which is amazing. I really love this. You can see what it was like before, you can see what it was like after, and you can instantly make changes onto the right hand side of the photo while still looking at the before without having to press any buttons, it's just there. Now you've seen all of that AI styles, you can preset every photo has been edited in about a minute or two. That's unbelievable. Obviously you have to go in and maybe make small minor adjustments, but I reckon just by importing all of these, all of these photos are pretty usable. We're gonna go over to this photo here and we're gonna reset all. So this is the raw photo and we're gonna go through all of the edit page. So you, like normal, you've got temperature, so I'm gonna warm up this photo a little bit. You've got your tint I'm not gonna to touch and you've got your exposure. I think it's a little bit dark, so I am gonna up the exposure just a tad. And I'm just gonna give this photo a full edit and then we'll get back to it in a minute. So let's just say this is the quick edit I've made it. I've made it a little bit warmer, I've up the shadows a little bit, and this is where it can get interesting. So as you can see, on the right, you've got your texture, you've got your clarity, DH, your vibrance, your saturation, just like every other software. You've got curves and you've got all of the same. See, this is literally so similar to Lightroom, HSL and color. Color grading, literally, it's the same as Lightroom. It's so similar. Lens corrections, the same goes for the cropping menu. It looks very similar to Lightroom. You can change your aspect ratio with one click. And one thing I love about this section is that it's got the same masks as Lightroom as well. So all you do is click on this button at the top. You can select the subject, select the background, select the sky. You can create a radial gradient or a linear gradient. So if we hit the subject, it will lock onto the subject within a few seconds and there you go. So now at the top as well, it says lock edit and it also says mark as reference edit. Now this is where Polar Next really shines because these reference edits are basically what Polar looks at and applies that edit to every other photo. So now I've just edited this photo. If I make this photo a reference edit and it says AI will use this edit to improve similar photos. Now, as you can see, it's not all photos. It only says similar photos and it didn't process all of the 59 photos. It processed about 46. This is already being applied to every other photo. So as you can see, loads have already done. So the one next to it, the edit I've just made has been put straight onto this photo and it looks exactly the same near enough. But all of the basic edit I've just made has been processed straight over to every other photo. So it can look at different lighting conditions and determine whether it's similar enough to that photo, that reference edit, and apply it to the others. Polar Next can actually select up to 20 photos for its reference edits, all at different lighting conditions. So let's say there's five reference edits, one in dark, one inside, one outside a golden hour, and Polar Next will automatically find the same lighting conditions that are similar to that reference edit in your catalog and apply that edit from that reference edit to all of the other photos with the similar lighting conditions. And as you can see, the way you can get more reference edit photos is you go into the settings at the bottom left, you go to setup, and it says comprehensive setup. This is off at the minute, which is why it only gave me one reference photo, but it says edit multiple reference photos during the setup to provide more knowledge for AI before processing starts. So like I mentioned earlier, you've got a history panel down here and it says apply to AI styles. So if I go back to original, as you can see, it's gone back to the original raw photo. And on this one, you've got the first AI style and it hasn't changed, it's not deleted or anything. And then this AI style at the top is the one I just made. If I now go down to apply AI style, I can make this a reference edit again, and it will edit all of the other photos again back to that style. 
So even though you do make changes here and there, you might want to go for a more saturated look, you might want to go for a more this look, it will apply the history of all the AI styles down the left so you're, you can always try new things and all it takes is a click of a button and a click of another button to make his reference edit to apply to every other photo. So there's no time wasted at all. You can really get unique, you can really get creative. The more you use Polar Next and the more you edit your photos, the more Polar Next can see your editing style and your habits. So if you go into every photo and add 10 contrast, or if you go into every photo and minus 20 calarity, for example, Polar Next will see that, it will learn from that. Every time you import a photo, even if you choose one of the previous AI styles, if you choose a new preset, it will automatically adjust your habits, for example, like the 10 contrast and minus 20 clarity onto the photos automatically. You don't even have to think about it. Now you do obviously have to use Polar Next for a long time and edit probably thousands of photos for it to be really accurate and actually work quite well. But the more you use it, this history panel I think will be really cool and a really cool way to speed up your photo editing workflow. So let's edit another photo and see what the reference edits can do. So I've got this photo here, I'm gonna reset it. And this is what the raw looks like before when it's all the confetti. And again, I'm just gonna give it a quick little edit and then we're gonna see what the reference edits can actually do. So here's the other edit I made and as you can see, here's the before and the after. And if I go up to the top and make this a reference edit, as you can see at the bottom, it's processing this photo and it's processing eight more, seven more, six more, and it's processing all of the ones similar to this photo because it can see the lighting condition of this photo and it's applying this edit to other photos that have similar lighting conditions, which are, I think, these ones on the left. It's quite similar, but again, it's not perfect because I do think it's a little bit too saturated, this one, so I might just go down and lower the saturation just a little bit so it's all of these photos and as you can see this is the other confetti photo that i took and it is very similar to it i just think it's a little bit less warm so i think all you got to do is basically go into there and make it a little bit more warmer so as you can see it's very similar now because all i did was basically add a little bit of warmth that's all i had to do and all i did was press one button, which was mark it as a reference edit. And it took photos that look similar to that reference edit and it supplied that edit to all of them photos. So it saves so much time and it's as easy as that. I just edited one photo and pressed one button and the majority of the other photos were done. There might be a little bit of tweaking here and there like with the lower the saturation on one photo and made the other photo a little bit more warmer, but that's significantly a lot of time saved. It's just so much quicker and so much easier. But now I want to export all of these photos. You go up to export at the top. You've got all your export settings that you would normally see in Lightroom. You can export into a JPEG or a TIFF, so you can't do a PNG. Quality 100%, just like your normal. Color space, sRGB or display P3. Full size dimension, 300 PPI. You can either choose a new file name or keep the original. And then you can either click all selected images, which is just the first one, or you can do all images in project. So I'm gonna click all images in project and click export 60 images. And at the top it says Polar Next will be able to edit test one, just click edit files and it starts exporting. Now I did this yesterday and it didn't take ages, but it took quite a while. But overall, I've got to say, I really do like this and I really am impressed with this software. I think it's really good for wedding photographers especially. And I think this is mainly aimed at wedding photographers because it's a great way of editing your thousands of photos from a wedding really quickly and really efficiently. So now we're gonna talk about some of the pros and the cons, what I think about this software. Is it good enough? Do you think it's worth it? And who is it for basically? And let's just get straight into the first thing that I really enjoy, and I mentioned it earlier, and that is the info section. I think the info section is really cool and I didn't have to add it into the beta version at all. I easily could have waited for the full release and it's just nice being to see your camera settings and what camera and lens was used because if you forgot on a day, you can just have a look and you can see exactly what was used. Another thing that I love is importing Lightroom presets because I think a lot of the time if people have their own Lightroom presets and they've created them in Lightroom, then it might scare them from switching because if they have to go through and create all of their presets again, which they might use on a daily basis, it might just turn them off and not really want to switch over. But the fact that you can import all of your Lightroom presets over, 
I think it's amazing and it really does encourage Lightroom users to give Polar Next a try. Another thing that I absolutely love about Polar Next, and I know they have it on Lightroom as well, but I just, for some reason, I think this one is really nice and really quick and easy to use as well. And that's the before and after page. Just one click of a button, you've got before, after, straight away. And as soon as you start making adjustments, you can see it in real time compared to the previous original file. And I just think it's a really cool a nice way to edit your photos. Another thing that I absolutely love about Polar Next, and I think it's the best feature there, and that is just the time saving aspect of it. For wedding photographers especially, all you have to do is either click an AI style, and within minutes, if that, every single photo is edited, and that's it. If you're happy with what they look like, they're all edited, they've got saturation, they've got contrast, so the fact that it literally saves you not hours, probably days of time of editing is just a game changer for me, especially with the reference edits as well. And another thing that I love about Polar Next is just the edit panel. It's the same as Lightroom pretty much. Everything is there just like Lightroom and you really do feel at home, especially when you use your presets that you can import from Lightroom. So let's talk about some of the things that I think they should improve and what they can improve on hopefully by the time the full releases. Because remember, this is in beta early access so it might be a bit janky it might be a bit buggy so try and ignore a lot of these bugs because hopefully by the full release all of these will be gone ever since i've started to export them photos it's still on one out of 60 so it's not even exported the first photo so it has bugged i will have to cancel this and try it again i'm sure the second time will work because the first time i tried exporting the other day as well the first time didn't work the second time worked perfectly another thing that i don't like about polar next is that it's a web-based software only now this can be a good thing for a lot of people because they can log in anywhere in the world on a different computer and they can access polar next as long as you log in as long as you have your hard drives but i just really do think and a downloadable app would have been perfect for this but again this is mainly aimed at wedding photographers and a lot of the time wedding photographers are either at home or at a coffee shop. It just will be nice to have a downloadable app for that odd time that you might not have internet. Another thing that I don't really like and I would love them to add is collections. If you're a wedding photographer and you've been doing this for years, you might want to organize each and different wedding into months. A big 2023 collection and inside that collection you've got January, April, all of the months of the year and then inside of them, that's where you've got your wedding projects just to organize it a bit because at the minute it looks like you can only have your projects and it might look a little bit messy the more and more you use it. Another thing that I don't really like is that there's no histogram. So you can't really see the exposure of your photo at the minute in the beta, but I have spoken to them and luckily they said they will be implementing it into the full release. I have used other apps as well, obviously like Lightroom, but other AI apps. I have used Luminar Neo before that's a very different no, but something that is very similar is Imogen AI. Now, a lot of photographers already use Imogen AI, and if you do, leave your comments down below if you have. And Imogen AI is great, and the one great thing about Imogen AI is that it links directly to Lightroom. Now, Polar Next is very similar to Imogen AI, the way it edits the photos in AI different presets and how quickly it does it within minutes. But what I really love about Polar Next, and I think is really unique compared to Imogen AI, is that it's its complete own app. It doesn't need Lightroom to stand up for itself because it has all of the editing power it needs just like Lightroom. You can do it all in one place, all in one app, and it can save so much time. Overall, I really do think Polar Next is an unbelievable photo editing software, and I really do think it will have a place with a lot of wedding photographers in the future when it does have the full release. Considering it is in beta, it's really impressive of actually how much stuff is here. And I gotta say, it's really optimized well. Just using the app overall, it's super fast. That's what I love about this app, and I really do think it's optimized great. So imagine on the full release how good this app can actually be if they can fix some of the problems with the exports and some of the bugs. I think this app will be really, really useful for a lot of wedding photographers. However, is it worth it? Now, I have to say, it is very expensive. You can pay monthly, you can pay yearly, or you can pay as you go. And the pay as you go cost is five cents per export, but I'm not quite sure how much it is in pounds or pennies. Now, if you go for the monthly section, this is where it gets very expensive. You have three options, unlimited, ultimate, and essential. What you have to understand here is you are paying for exporting. You're not paying for editing. You can go on there and edit for free. For the time saving metric of it, you can concentrate more on booking clients and booking weddings because you don't have the editing time getting in your way. If this Polar Next will allow you to book more weddings on £100 a month, 
is definitely worth it in my opinion. Hopefully it will pay for itself and you can shoot so many more weddings, deliver so many more photos and get so much more money. Or you could just up your prices by like a hundred pound and it pays for it and hopefully people will still book you. It's very hard to justify this uh, if you're not a wedding photographer because it is very expensive and I don't think it's worth it if you're not a full on professional wedding photographer. To some people it might not be worth it because it is a lot of money. However, if it allows you to cut down days worth of editing time, it could allow you to book more weddings, potentially earn you a lot more money then I do think Polar Next can be worth it to a lot of professional wedding photographers out there who really wants to do them three things. So leave your comments down below what you think of this editing software. Do you think it is a game changer and will you be using it? Make sure you use the link in the description down below to get free 1,500 export credits so you can test out Polar Next all by yourself just to see what it's like at no cost. Just use the link in the description below to sign up and get your free 1500 export credits. I'm really impressed with this app and I hope you will be too. So leave your comments down below what you think. Thank you very much for watching and thank you very much again to Polar Next for sponsoring this video. And I guess I'll see you guys on the next one. See you later.